Then this example, we're going to be selecting a list of users that have email addresses and IDs and selecting that information from the spreadsheet. Using that information from the spreadsheet, constructing an email, also taking a file that we've got, a Google Doc, and then converting it into a file that we can send as an attachment, and then also creating a HTML file on the fly from the data from the spreadsheet and constructing an HTML object that gets converted into an HTML file. And then all of this is going to be sent out using the mail app service, sending out the email to the email address from the spreadsheet, subject using the user's name in the subject line, creating the HTML body, so sending the email as an HTML email, and then adding in the two attachments. So one is going to be the HTML file that was just created directly within the app script, and then also selecting a file that we have on our drive and adding that in as an attachment. So the end result will be that we're sending out emails to all of the users. Each one of the users gets their customized email address and they get a customized HTML file that gets generated that can be downloaded, added to the drive. And then there's also the attached PDF file that's coming from the contents of the doc. Let's go ahead and we're gonna get some data from a Google Sheet and we're gonna be using a bound script. So the script is bound to this uh, spreadsheet and then within the spreadsheet, we've got a column for name, email addresses and ID. So what we want to do is we want to go, go through all of these values and send the user emails. So let's go ahead and start the project where what we want to do is create a basic function. So create that function to manage the sending of the email. We can just call it sender mail and create a meaningful name there for the function and then select the spreadsheet object. So using the spreadsheet app service and then get the active. And in this case, because we do have an active spreadsheet, we're going to select the active spreadsheet and then using the logger log, get the sheet and then let's uh, output the name of the sheet. So that's the name of the actual spreadsheet object. So we see sample apps script. So that's what's being displayed there. And we want to get the actual sheet itself within the spreadsheet. So we can make a selection of the sheet by selecting the sheet object and then using the spreadsheet object and then get sheet by name. This allows us to select an individual sheet. So it's actually get sheet by name. And then we need to specify whatever the sheet name is. And in this case, it's going to be users. And this works better than just selecting it by the order that it's in, because this will allow us to select out the sheet. So even though if it might not be the first sheet, it might be one of the sheets that is uh, multiple, when you have multiple sheets within your spreadsheet, it might not be the first sheet. So this will allow us to select that first sheet object. And then here we can get the sheet name and that will return back the name of the sheet. So we want to make sure that we're getting users back. And once we do have the name of the sheet, then we can make a selection of the range of data. So let's create another variable called data. And within this object, we use the get data range, and this will select the entire range value of the available items within the sheet. And then in order to get the values, we use the get values methods. So this is going to return back an array of all of the values of the items within the sheet. So run that code. And there we've got all of the contents of the sheet. So now what we can do is we can loop through all of those values that are within the sheet. So creating a loop and because this is an array, we can use the for each method for each one of the items within the sheet and then return back the users individually. So this will return back the row of contents. So it's going to be in an array format. And there's all of the arrays of the data and the sheet. So let's also, let's uh, get just the rows. So doing data and let's slice it starting at one and then output that into the log. 
and we'll see what that gets returned back within the rows. So now what we're doing is we're getting them starting at index value of one, which is the second row. And that's where all the data is actually sitting. So that's where all the user's information is sitting. So let's adjust this instead of getting data, we'll get rows and this actually should be plural. So it should be rows, run the code. And now we're getting just the user information that we want. We can also do this within the one statement. So we don't have to use the data. We can just get all of the rows and slice it. And then you can comment out the line number four because we don't need the data anymore. And that's going to return back the same. So you can do it within the one statement like that where you chain together the various methods. So as we loop through, the first value is going to be the user's name. So we can select that user's name. So the name of the user is going to be within the first column. And if we want to just get the name, we can output the name into the log and run that again. So that's going to return back all of the names of the users. And we want to actually use some of the data that's contained within the sheet and then send out an email. And we're going to be using the mail app send mail service. So let's construct the emails that we want to use. So we've got the name. We also want to get the user ID. So that will be within the column number two. And we can see that. So there's the zero, one, two. So it's returning back the values from the third column in where we've got the user IDs. And then we also want to get the emails. So the email of the user is going to be within the column with index number one. So it's going to be actually the second column that we have within the spreadsheet. So that gives us all of the parameters that we need. We also want for an email, we need to create a subject. So create a subject variable, test email. And then we can also, what I'll do is I'm going to use the back ticks instead of the quotes and then use this as a template literal. And we'll have a dynamic value there for the subject. So that will take out the name of the person added into the subject. And then we've got the body of the email. So within this body element, we'll, and then we'll just list out whatever the user's user ID is going to be. So that's another value that we've got there within the user ID. And you can also just use these directly within your content as well. So now that we've got the contents for the email, use the mail app service and then the send mail and the parameters that it requires is going to be the recipient that is going to get the mail, the subject, and then also the body of the email. So let's uh, run the sender mail. And now when we go into the inbox, we see that we've sent out all of the emails and then within the message, we've got the same contents that we had within the spreadsheet. So let's say you can go through the spreadsheet and you can also send using the mail app service. We can structure it as an object as well. So this gives us some more options within the parameters. So we do it within an object format and the object here, we can have whatever the email is. And then we've got the subject within the object. And this is once again, corresponds with the subject. And then the body of the email can just be the body contents and save that. And so this is going to actually work the exact same way where it's going to send out the email addresses. And this is just another format. And when you're using the send mail email as an object, this is also going to give you more options here within what you've got within the content. So if we want to set this as um, HTML email, and we'll just uh, write here, hello, and then whatever we've got for the name and save that. And then when we run it, the new ones are cut, still coming in as text emails. So we have an option within the body in order to send it as HTML email. And so this is an advanced parameter and it's called the HTML body. 
and then we're sending that as the body. So let's uh, try that one more time. Go back to the inbox. So now we're sending it as an HTML email. So that's another option that you have within the emails. And then we can also send attachments in this format as well. So what we need to do is what we want to do is create an attachment. So we're going to create a blob attachment and using the utilities, create a new blob. And then within the blob, this is where we can have the HTML content. So let's create some HTML content and we'll create a variable called HTML and then add in whatever HTML content that we want. And we'll also do an unordered list, have some list items there. So this is some typical HTML that you might want to add in. And of course you can add in whatever HTML that you want into the structure. And then also I'm going to add in the body contents as HTML here. So now we've got a new blob. We've got the HTML that we're using to create the blob. We need to identify the text type. So creating it as an HTML type file. So we set the meme type as HTML. And then whatever we want for the HTML name, so the string name of this item. So let's, uh, we can create it using the username. And I'm going to use the template literals once again, because this is constructing a string with the name and then with the extension HTML. And so when we want to attach this, so now we've created a new HTML file that's going to be sitting as a blob. And we can take this blob and select the attachments. Attachments is going to be within an array format. So just attached within the object and it's within the array format. So setting up that array, so setting the attachments and then we just attach the blob and we can comma separate out additional files if we want as well. So now let's run the code and now we've got HTML files that are attached and these are constructed on the fly. We can have a number of attachments. So we're going to select the document here. So getting the ID of the document and this is uh, again within the bound script. So I usually like for the documents, if we're selecting a different document to set it up as an ID and then we want to select the file as an object. So this can just be a regular file. Then using the drive app, we get the file by ID and this is where we use the ID of the file. So if we want to attach this file and we want to attach it, let's say we want to attach the file as a PDF. So we get the file object using the meme type and set it as PDF meme type. And this will attach the file object as an attachment when we're sending out the, uh, also creating the HTML file all on the fly. We need to accept permissions. So we're accepting additional permissions for the script to run and use. So it's accepting the drive permissions there. So now it's running through and we can see that now the emails that are going to be coming in are going to have the PDF file version of the doc. They're going to have also an HTML file of the document that is created. And also the email will be sent out in HTML. So those are some of the options that you can do when you're creating emails and sending them out from a list within a spreadsheet.